All right, let's go through how we're going to assemble our toy car. Now, the way Fusion 360 works and many other 3D modeling softwares is that you can create objects that are called components, which are objects that are kind of made out of one material or things you would pretty, or you, maybe you would 3D print individually. And then what you can do is you can assemble them. And what assemble means is you take objects that are kind of um, solid objects on their own and you put them together in a way or you tell them the computer how they would be put together to make a more complex object. So for our case, our car has four components. It has the body, it has the driver, and then it has two sets of wheels, one in the front and one in the back. So each of these components is an object by themselves. The body is an object by itself, as is the driver, as are the wheels. And then we put them together, we give, we define ways in which they relate to each other to create an assembly. And this assembly is a fairly simple assembly. Again, if you want to do more advanced things, there are a bunch of videos you can watch that go into more detail into advanced assemblies. But this one is pretty straightforward. So first we're going to do is we're going to make a new design. And the way Fusion works, you don't, does assemblies and components are all the same type of file. So we're going to make a new one. And to make an assembly, we actually have to save it first. When we make parts, we usually don't have to save it right away. But for an assembly, we have to save it and give it a name so it, the computer knows how to reference the different um, pieces to each other. So I'm just going to call it uh, test car assembly and I'll keep it in the same folder and there's nothing in it. So to assemble pieces all we have to do is we have to find them in our library over here and just drag them into our window. So now you also want to think about when you assemble things the order you assemble them in. I usually tend to assemble the kind of biggest most basic structure first and then reference all the other pieces to that. So I'm going to assemble the body first. So I'm just going to drag the body file into here. It's going to pop it in. It kind of blows it up, turns it blue, gives you a bunch of options. Because it's the first thing, I'm just going to hit OK. And what I'm going to do is it shows up over here in the browser. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to tell Fusion to ground it. And ground just means kind of lock it in place. And because this is going to be the, the main part or the main component that I'm going to reference with my other components that come in. So the first one, drop it in, ground it, and now we have something that we can reference everything else to. So the next thing I'm going to assemble is my driver. I'm going to go find the driver in the library, drag it into the window. Now Fusion tries to guess what you want to do, and sometimes it's pretty good at guessing and actually put the driver in the right spot. But as you can see, I can grab the driver and I can move the driver around. So it's not exactly in the right spot. So I'm going to move the driver over here for a second because I really wanted to find how the driver interacts with this car. So even though it looked like it was in the right spot, maybe, and sometimes that's fine if you just want to show an image of what this might look like, but if you really want to reference how the driver and the car interact, you want, you want to add some what we call joints. So I'm just going to move it over there and hit OK. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I'm going to go up to the top and under the Assemble tab, I can click assemble and click joint. I can click the letter J or I can click the joint icon up here and I can create a relationship. So I'm going to click joint. And if you notice the car kind of disappears almost and turns into wireframe because remember the car is grounded. So it knows it's not, that's not the thing I'm going to join to something else. And the only other component I have is the person. So the person's still there. Now what I want to do is I want to place the person here into the slot in the car. So I want to, I'm going to create what we call a cylindrical joint so that the person, the cylinder of this person's body slides into the cylinder hole of the car. So I'm going to go over through my joint dialog, go to motion, select cylindrical, go back to position. And now it's, it's waiting for me to, to pick um, different pieces of cylinders to kind of reference each other. So I'm going to go to the body. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And if you, look at the kind of legs of the toy I can I can click on the bottom so see if you notice how it jumps it jumps to the bottom of the cylinder I can jump to the middle of it right there it's a little bit hard to see but look at where it snaps there's those kind of crosshairs right there or I can jump to the top of it or I can jump to the middle of this body or I could jump to the middle of the head so there's a lot of rotational things that are kind of like cylinders that I could reference I want to reference this part right here kind of the the butt, if you would say, of the little toy person, because that's what I want to be in the seat in the car. So I'm going to kind of drag my mouse, and once I'm on the cylinder, if you notice, the, the mouse kind of snaps to different spots, to the middle and the ends. I want it to snap to the top right there. 
and I'll click. And now it's asking me to reference something else. What is that piece going to reference? I'm going to go in my car and there is a cylinder hole here and I can reference the top of that. I can reference the top of the smaller hole. I can reference them if I kind of rotate it down here. Sometimes you have to rotate it weird ways to try to find what you're looking at. I can reference the bottom of that hole right there. Um, I can probably grab the middle. I can reference this cylinder here. So there's a lot of spots that I can reference. So what I want to do is I want the bottom of that or the top of the legs to be right here on the top of this hole right there. So I'm going to have it snap to that. And it puts him inside there. And now you notice it's sliding him around. And we'll get to that in a second. But right now, now I'm pretty much happy right now with where my person is. I'm going to add some in a second. I'll show you how we can add some constraints to it. But my person is in the right place. So I'm going to hit OK. And if I click on the person, I can rotate the person around. I can slide them in and out of the hole. I can actually slide them through the hole all the way, which really shouldn't be possible. But I can't drag him sideways anymore because he's constrained to being in that cylinder. So all I can do is slide him up and down and rotate the way that the, the person's looking. But like I said, I want to add one more constraint because I don't want him to be able to, I want to be able to pull him out of the car, but he shouldn't be able to pass through the bottom of it because there is this lip right there that doesn't allow that. So I want to add that constraint to it. So I'm going to go back to um, my driver over here, right click on it, Actually, uh, no, I'm going to go down to the joint down here. You can see the little joint icon. Right-click on that and hit Edit Joint Limits. And if I want to edit the joint, I can go back here. But I want to edit the limits of the joint. So I'm going to select that. Now, I don't want to edit the rotational limits of it. I want them to be free to, to turn around. But I want to rotate how far the person slides. So I'll select Slide. Now, there's a one weird thing about this is that the way I made this joint down is technically positive it up is negative because the way the surface was facing when i click these things so i'm going to i need to set a minimum and a maximum i want my maximum to be zero because zero is actually where when the bottom of this guy is touching the top of that lip and i want to set a minimum of i don't know let's say like negative i don't know 60 for how high you can go out of there and the way you can check if this is correct, you can click Animate, and it'll actually slide them up and down and show you to the extent of where the person can go. And if I go back to Rotate, it'll rotate them around and show you that extent. Happy with that? I'll hit OK. And now when I grab the person, I can still rotate them freely. I can put them into the car, but again, now it stops. Even when I move my mouse down farther, he doesn't go any farther than that. And when I move him out, he doesn't go any higher than that limit I created, so I can't pull him out any farther than that. So now my person is assembled. Next up is the wheels. So I'm going to grab my wheels, drag it into the screen. Again, it's going to throw them in here. It'll try to guess where they go. It probably doesn't get it right, so I'm just going to drag them off so I can see them better and hit OK. Now this time I want to do a similar thing to the cylindrical, except for I don't want the wheels to be able to slide at all. So I'm going to... Again, click the joint button. This time, see how the person and the wheels show up? Because I could actually add another joint to the person if I wanted to. But the car doesn't because the car is grounded. I want to this time pick a Revolute. So I'm going to Motion, click Revolute. And Revolute allows me to... It's kind of like a cylindrical one, but it doesn't let it slide. And this time, I want to take the center. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see better. The center of my axle here. Because again, I can do the end of the axle, the center of the axle, the other end. The outside of the wheel there's a lot of cylinders i can snap to but i want the center of this axle cylinder so i'm going to kind of mouse over the axle slide it until it jumps to the center now i want that to go into the center of my wheel well here so i'm going to have to rotate this because i can grab the outside of the wheel well maybe uh go grab it right there is the outside of the wheel well but i want to grab the center so if i rotate the car upside down a little bit i can slide this and you notice when i get close to the wheel well it kind of is now sliding inside that curve because that's basically a cylindrical curve. I want to snap it when it jumps to the center and snap it right there. Click on that. Pops my wheels in there. And if you notice, now my wheels are perfectly centered. And if I go to motion and hit animate, they can turn. 
but they can't slide anywhere. All they can do is turn. I'm happy with that. You can hit OK. You can zoom out and I can test. I can grab the wheels down and once I click and grab them, I can move them around. So they turn, but I can't just slide them in or out. Now I'm going to just repeat the process, but for the back wheels, so I'll do that really quickly. And I'm going to use the exact same part or the exact same component and just drag it in again. You notice now two of them show up over here, and that's fine. Again, I'm just going to drag it over here so it's I can see it better. Hit OK. Add a joint. I'm going to add, and kind of, it kind of saves the last joint you made, so I'm going to keep it as Revolute. I'm going to try to pick the middle of this axle. And let me show you what happens if I pick the, if I don't pick the inside or the middle of the wheel well, if I do the um, side of it by mistake. If I put it here, the wheels will still go, but they're kind of jammed out to the side. They're not centered. So I'm going to unselect that and go back to pick the middle of the wheel well. And the wheels slide in there. They can rotate. They're nice and evenly centered. Hit OK. And now I have my toy car fully assembled. Let's do one last check to make sure that everything kind of rotates. The guy can go in and out and can turn around. The front wheels can rotate around but don't come out. And the back wheels can rotate around but don't come out.